All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Mr. Woods' Pandemic Classroom. Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, the Minoan peoples and the Mycenaean peoples of um, ancient, ancient Greece. Uh, so when we think of ancient Greece, we tend to think of like Athens and Sparta and uh, the peoples that lived there. For this, um, it's a little bit different. Uh, these are actually the peoples that uh, are before those particular ancient groups. Um, so you had two groups known as the Minoans and Mycenaeans. Minoans lived on uh, the island of Crete in the Mediterranean, uh, southern Aegean Sea. And the Mycenaeans lived on uh, the mainland of the Balkan Peninsula or the, um, the actual um, Peloponnese uh, is how it's often attributed. So I'm going to pull my picture out of the way so you all can see this beautiful fresco that's up here. Uh, so a fresco is a painting that's made on white on uh, wet plaster. And so you can see um, in this image how it, it appears to be cracked. Now some of that is certainly due to time. Uh, of course that's a part of it. The other element is um, actually the, the the wet plaster drying, uh, providing cracks, and it's some of that artistic style. Uh, that's one of the things you will see, and, and this is in particular with Minoan culture. Uh, you also can see that the theme here, you've got the dolphins and the fish. Uh, Minoan culture and life basically centers around the sea and uh, dominance of the sea and trade there. Um, so, so we'll be talking about that as we as we move through and discuss the Minoans. So, uh, first we need to have a pretty firm understanding of actual Greek geography, uh, which we'll, we'll catch here by looking at the map and, and discuss a couple things. Um, it's important to note that most of Greece uh, is is not able to be farmed. The land is not arable. Um, so roughly 20% of Greek land can be farmed, and the majority of that is on the mainland. Um, you know, these islands, um, what, what is known as the archipelago, um, which, which uh, is what the, the actual Greeks would have called the Aegean Sea uh, and the, the islands in there. Uh, the name actually we'll, we'll talk about briefly too, uh, Aegean that comes with the Minoans. So the the island of Crete is down here uh, in the southern part, and that's the main island uh, for the Minoan culture. Of course, there would have been you know uh, small sections elsewhere, but the Minoans primarily on the island of Crete, and there was a capital um, palace city uh, known as Gnosis. Uh, that we'll talk about too. Um, and so <clears throat> the Minoan peoples primarily survived based on trade. Uh, they had complex trade routes, the Mycenaeans would as well, and that's how the Greeks in general survive. Complex trade uh, and developing colonies to be able to import the things that they need. I pull my face out of the way here. You can see it talks about the spread of Hellenic culture. Uh, so the Greeks actually referred to themselves as the Hellenes, um, or, the, or sometimes the, the Hellens, and you'll see it uh, that way. I'm going to share um, a copy of the Iliad and the Odyssey, which are two epic poems we'll discuss. Uh, of course, you don't have to read those, but if you do, you will see the Greeks referred to as the Achaeans uh, at times, or the Hellenes. Um, so... This is actually a um, <coughs> excuse me. This is actually a ancient, um, almost Greek myth, you could say, um, of of where Greek origin comes from. Um, so essentially, um, the this Helen with with two L's uh, is a is a male. Um, and so this is referring to the, the origin of Greek culture and Greek life. So Helen is the progenitor of the Hellenes or the Greeks. Um, and kind of, I guess, the, the myth here is that he is the son of Deucalion um, and Pyrrha. So Pyrrha and Deucalion is a, um, uh, it's a story of an ancient Greek myth. Um, basically, he he may have even been the son of Zeus, according to the different stories. But he um, he has three children, probably the most famous 
um, is Aeolus, who becomes the god of the winds, and he'll come up um, again later. And of course, this is all um, basically everything that we're pulling from is according to a Greek historian named Thucydides. Um, but anyway, he conquered this region of of the Balkans and the Aegean Sea uh, before you know Greek times, and um, founded a, a tribe in Pythia uh, known as the Myrmidons. Uh, we'll, we'll cover them briefly too at some point, uh, which would later be led by uh, by Achilles. But so the, the Hellenes is is the essentially the name of that ancient group of people uh, that would eventually be known as um, Greeks. And so we refer to that um, as Hellenic culture, that Greek culture uh, in honor of that name. Uh, so the Minoan Thalassocracy, so a Thalassocracy is uh, government or dominance or power uh, held through the sea. So the Minoan civilization, it began about 3100 BCE. It really uh, was at its height around 1900 BCE. It's located again on, on the island of Crete. So if we're looking at this map over here to our left, the island of Crete is right here. Um, and the capital was Gnosis. Uh, it was a defensible location. Crete itself is a defensible island. It's ideal for trade. It allows control of the Aegean for both shipping um, and a, kind of a tributary uh, service. So basically, you would um, you would hold sea dominance, and other groups of people would pay you tribute um, to be able to either trade in the seas that you controlled or, or whatnot. Now, the Minoans themselves, um, they wouldn't have called themselves that. We don't know what they would have called themselves um, because the Minoan language, what's known as Linear A, uh, has not been deciphered. So we can't read anything that they've written, and, and we do have a collection of some tablets. Uh, we don't know what they called themselves. Um, however, we call them the Minoans because of a Greek myth. Uh, so this was, uh, I believe it's Sir Arthur Evans, um, is the individual who who discovered uh, the palace at Gnosis and, and the, uh, named the people the Minoans because there is a, a myth of a, um, a king of Crete named Minos um, who ends up being the, I guess, inadvertent stepfather to the Minotaur. Um, and... This is the story where the um, the labyrinth is constructed to hide the Minotaur, and tribute is taken from the Athenian peoples of mainland Greece. Uh, every I think it's seven years or something like that, they, they send uh, people to be eaten essentially by the Minotaur until the the king of Athens's son. Uh, who doesn't know that he's his son goes out and, and is able to slay the Minotaur. Uh, that would be Theseus. He's able to defeat the Minotaur and he makes it back. And uh, his father, King Aegeus of Athens, you know, uh, thinks that he has died because the wrong color of sail is raised. And so he flings himself from the cliff into the sea, uh, hence the name of the Aegean Sea. So. Uh, anyway, a lot of that stuff is tied to Greek myth. All myths have some form of truth to it or some grain of truth. Uh, the palace complex at Gnosis is, is incredibly large and labyrinthine in description. So, you know, there could be the story of the labyrinth. Uh, and there is a lot of um, uh, secretity given to bulls in uh, Minoan religion, which we'll look at in a moment. So uh, the Minotaur, uh, the half-man, half-bull creature, you know, there could be some some connection to their religion there. Not that I believe a Minotaur is running around a, the island of Crete. However, um, you know, the, the sacredness placed on bulls and the uh, ancient Minoan culture, there could have been a tie-in there in some form. Uh, so Minoan culture, again, it revolves around trade. Um, it's very much organized, right? They have a centrally organized government. Uh, they have a hierarchical social structure. They have developed art. Uh, we talked about the, the commerce 
um, piece with the trade. We've seen the frescoes. I'll show you a, a mosaic here coming up. Uh, we know that they engaged in trade all through the Mediterranean from Spain to Mesopotamia, so around the entire, entire uh, Mediterranean Sea. The Minoan people are incredibly wealthy, and this wealth extends from the upper class to the lower class. So even the poorest people in Minoan society uh, would have had pretty wealthy lives. Um, they would have had homes with several rooms, and they would have had relative lives of leisure, or at least leisure time. Uh, so that's unlike other cultures where you kind of have that the the slave group and the servile group at the bottom and the upper class and there's not uh, that middle class is still a working class that's kind of barely getting by. Uh, that's not the case in Minoan culture and that's probably because of the trade dominance uh, and just the influx of wealth to their to their island. Uh, you can see in the image here, you know, they they definitely have a highly developed infrastructure. Um, so you know these public buildings this this was probably uh, either some piece of a palace or some piece of a temple and of course you can see it's it's been restored somewhat uh, you can see the the stone paving stones down here um, you know for the roads you can see the walls constructed uh, of stone uh, so this is a large complex at one point in time uh, and this is just one of the the three main Minoan sites that exist. Uh, they had they had uh, plumbing to some degree, uh, sewer system, so they were very advanced for their time period. You know, looking back 5,000 years ago or so. So this is the the um, uh, the mosaic I was describing or told you that you would see. Uh, it depicts what we call Minoan bull leaping. Now. We don't exactly know what that means. Uh, it could have been some attempt to ride the bull. Um, there is the argument that these individuals would actually allow the bull to charge them, grab a hold of its horns, and leap over its back. <clears throat> we know the bull's sacred to the Minoans, um, and we have you know this example as well as a few others that display the bull uh, in some type of ceremony or some type of. Um, of game uh, or, or something like that. We can assume by the, these people's garb uh, that they are dressed for some type of ceremony or something you know important because they're not wearing typical clothing that we'd see. We see them uh, wearing jewelry and their hair is done. It's uncertain exactly what is going on in this image. Um, you know, there's people that say that they're just, you know, it's it's kind of showing off riding the bull or leaping or that there's some type of ceremony attached to this. We cannot say for certain. However, um, it certainly begs the question of what did the Minoan peoples believe? So as far as their religion goes, um, we know that they're polytheistic, meaning they have many gods. Um, we know that a lot of the Minoan deities are women. Uh, there's a the, the Cretan snake goddess who is often depicted as this uh, woman with you know her hands outstretched uh, holding serpents. Um, She's likely some type of mother goddess or, or earth goddess, um, very old, right? There's, there's not, people have tried to draw parallels to later Greek myth, especially with the goddess Athena, um, because the serpent is sacred to Athena as well to a degree. Uh, we can't say for you know, any type of certainty that that is the case. Uh, however, it's possible that there's some blending that goes on there. Uh, we know that nature was sacred to the Minoans, everything from trees to stone springs. Um, so these locations would have sacred value, and that probably has some tie into later nymphs um, in Greek myth, you know, being part of the nature, part of the spirits in nature. Uh, we also know that the bull is sacred. There's uh, examples of uh, bulls participating in human sacrifice. There's uh, evidence of bulls being a part of sacrifice. Uh, there's the story of the Cretan bull within uh, the the Hercules stories or Heracles, if we're talking Greek. Um, there is the story of the Minotaur. So the bull is very much centered on Crete, and we know that that is a part of their culture and it's sacred to them. Exactly how that fits in, we don't always know. Uh, there's even uh, evidence to suggest that they, they had a chief male deity that was a bull. Uh, so there's different stories. Uh, different stories there too. So uh, the Minoan collapse 
uh, or the fall of the Minoan civilization. Again, this is a, 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 a example of a fresco that was done, uh, and there's argument over what this depicts. So uh, you can see if you look, it looks like the earth is kind of taking over this city, and you can see people escaping on, on ships, and there's dolphins. Um, so we don't know exactly what happened. We know that the end of the Minoan civilization was marked by a lot of natural disasters as well as, as um, just bad weather for harvesting. Uh, so there were storms in the winter, there's earthquakes, uh, massive waves. And at some point in the 14th century, somewhere around uh, 1420 uh, BC, the Minoan civilization collapses. It, it basically disappears. Uh, we don't know exactly what led to that end. Uh, there's evidence of a large, very large volcanic eruption on the island of Thea, um, but there's also the possibility that their trade network collapsed. It could be either of those things or a combination of both. Um, this, this is often actually connected with the myth of the island of Atlantis. Uh, so we don't have a whole lot on Atlantis other than that's a, a pervasive myth um, that this island, you know, um, this, this advanced civilization of people just disappeared. Um, I think it is Plato that says something to the effect of the, the earth shook and the, uh, the island of Atlantis was consumed by the sea or something like that. Um, so is it possible that when they talk about Atlantis, they're actually talking about the Minoans and you know, we call them the Minoans. People then would have referred to them as Atlanteans. Maybe. It's also not possible, right? It's possible that this is a completely made up story and that the Minoans are the real civilization that maybe it's based on, maybe not. Um, again, there's a lot of speculation there. There's people that investigate that, that know more than I, uh, that still have not found answers. So brings us to the Mycenaeans. Uh, the Mycenaeans are an Indo-European group of people, meaning that they've kind of come out of those Caucasus Mountains region. Some go to India, and we'll be talking about that, um, I guess, next week. And then some, of course, went to uh, Greece and, and the upper Balkan areas. So they are a little bit different than the Minoans. They come, you know, before the Minoans and um, may have even been somewhat responsible for the collapse of that trade network, having a competing civilization such as the Mycenaeans. But they are a warrior culture. So they have a, a warrior aristocracy with kind of a, a warrior leader. They have citadels that are built up. Um, they have a complex trade and economic system. And we can read their writing. It's called Linear B. Uh, and we're able, we have been able to decipher Linear B and we can read it. Um, now, a lot of what we know about the kind of Mycenaean past has to do with a couple epic poems that are written uh, known as the Iliad and the Odyssey. And uh, they're told by Homer. Um, now, Homer was supposedly a blind poet, so of course he didn't write them down. These are carried on through oral tradition for many, 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 many years uh, until they are finally written down. I believe the... Um, time frame for the creation of the Iliad and the Odyssey was somewhere around 800 BCE. So of course that's several hundred years after the Mycenaeans uh, are even a group of people worth mentioning and who knows how long uh, that story existed before uh, it actually was written down. So you know the the Mycenaean um, civilization uh, is, like I said, a little bit different than the Minoans. Um, and, and, and we'll talk briefly about the, the Iliad uh, at a later point in this. Um, however, you can see the image of the Trojan horse here. Um, you know, so, so some of you may be familiar with that. It's actually not, uh, not really in the Iliad, uh, and it's mentioned only briefly in the Odyssey. Um, but the, the Trojan horse is, of course, how the... the um, the Mycenaeans, uh, under the rule of Agamemnon, were able to infiltrate the the city of Troy. So that brings us to Mycenaean culture. Um, you can actually see in the image here, uh, this is the corbelled arch that makes up 
um, it's sometimes known as the tomb of Agamemnon, um, or the, the, I think it's also called the treasury of Atreus. Um, but it's this, uh, location in, in Greece, um, that is a Minoan site and it's got this kind of domed interior. Uh, but that Corbel arch, a very early form of arch that, um, you know, that originates in, I think Babylon is one of the earliest uses of this in the, in the, uh, Mesopotamia. So we know that there was some interaction there, but you can see uh, it's an archway, but it's also known as a, the false arch uh, because it's created by basically uh, stacking blocks uh, and then capping them with a single block, whereas a true arch, you know, has kind of that keystone fit uh, that holds it all together. Uh, we also know that the Mycenaeans were involved in metalworking, of course, making weapons and sometimes even working with iron, though typically bronze. Um, and they're known for making these death masks. And that's kind of one of the things that the there's the it's known as the death mask of Agamemnon. That's this bronze golden mask that looks like a human face. And of course, that's a, a tradition in the ancient world as well. Um, having a death mask to cover the face of the dead as they're um, as they're able to be viewed and then buried. Uh, jewelry is a part of this as well, um, and of course, this the Mycenaeans kind of pick up on that large trade network that existed um, that the Minoans uh, helped to craft, and that's again, it's across the Mediterranean, everywhere from from Syria to Spain. Now. Neither of these civilizations last forever. Um, they both will come to an eventual collapse. And this is known as the collapse of the Bronze Age. Now, we don't know exactly what happened. <clears throat> Could have been tied to um, natural disasters, um, that kind of internetworking trade failure. Uh, could also be a, um, a piece of what's known as the invasion of the Sea Peoples. Uh, so the Sea Peoples are a group that we do not clearly understand. Um, we don't know where they're from or what they did, but we, uh, like I mentioned in the Egypt video, we do know that these invasions took place because we have recordings of them from the Hittites and from the Egyptians as well as uh, Mycenaeans to a degree. So <clears throat> the Sea Peoples, of course, would have impacted the uh, Mycenaean area and even just heavily damaging one of these regions would have led to the eventual decline of all because of the interconnectedness of the Bronze Age civilizations. This leads to a Dark Age in ancient Greece. Um, sometimes it's known as the Ionian Age. We don't have a lot of writing uh, or trade and the population definitely declines during this period as well. The only thing that does stand the test of it is culture. Um, some of their language um, manages to endure and the way of life of the Mycenaean people mixes with Minoan uh, civilization and Minoan culture and their way of life and helps give birth to later Hellenic culture and Hellenic civilization or Greek civilization. Um, so <clears throat> we are going to have a brief overview here of the different characteristics of the two and then we'll move on and talk briefly about some of the later Greek <clears throat> some of the later Greek civilization and um, from there we will uh, we'll, we'll leave off until we actually cover this proper. So the Minoans <clears throat> engaged in leisure activity. They did not hold slaves. Uh, all classes of their society are wealthy. No real military. They definitely had a dominant naval power. However, that navy was not engaged in military activities most of the time. It's primarily for trade. Uh, and their art <clears throat> and culture is centered around nature. Uh, if we look at the Mycenaeans on the other side, wealth is not evenly distributed. The, that upper warrior class um, and the, the royalty, as in most societies, is going to hold most of the wealth. Uh, they do have slaves. They are a warrior society, so most of their slaves are going to be slaves that exist um, because they're captured during war. Um, their art is centered on war, and most of their money is spent on the military. If we look at what they had in common, they both had writing styles that were similar. Like I said, there's linear A for the Minoans, linear B for the Mycenaeans. Um, they are both polytheistic. Mycenaean gods are probably closer to uh, your typical Greek gods than the Minoans, but there's likely some overlap there as well. Both engaged in trade, which made them fabulously wealthy, and both had farming. Uh, the Minoans farmed what they were able to and then relied on trade and colonies for the rest of their food. 
uh, the Mycenaeans, of course, had much more rich area being on the mainland, uh, had more land to be able to farm, but then also relied on that trade network. So we have a, uh, a couple of, uh, I say a couple, there's three here, three Greek authors uh, to mention, and, and then we'll, we'll actually probably talk about them more at a later date. Uh, so on the left over here, uh, you on the, I guess, far left, um, you have Homer, uh, who is that blind poet that I mentioned, wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. The Iliad, of course, being the story of the Trojan War. Uh, which was allegedly sparked over love, right? That that, um, that Helen um, sort of either fell in love with or was, was absconded by Paris, um, who was a Trojan prince. Helen was supposed to marry the king of Sparta, a guy named Menelaus. Uh, so Menelaus and his brother Agamemnon, the king of uh, Mycenae, uh, basically gather their armies and lead this attack on Troy all over Helen, right, to get Helen back. And since Helen doesn't want to leave, she wants to be with Paris or is kidnapped by him, depending on the version of the story. Um, that you know, this this war that goes on for years uh, occurs. Um, uh, the the hero Achilles is involved, and he kills one of the the sons of Troy, the the prince Hector, the older prince, uh, and drags his body behind his chariot as he circles the city. Um, you know, there's a lot to that, and a lot of the foundational Greek myths and stories come from this. Uh, you also have this um, this figure of um, Odysseus who emerges, and of course he's going to be the lead character in the Greek myth, the Odyssey. Uh, in the middle is Herodotus, who is the famous Greek historian. Uh, we'll be talking about him later as well, uh, and, and I have uh, a copy of his text over here that we'll, we'll look at. Um, and then on the far right there, uh, you have Xenophon, uh, who was a uh, Theban warrior, um, and we will be talking about him uh, when we get into the the Age of Alexander, uh, as well as a little bit before that. So, uh, as far as entertainment goes, we have three folks here. They were dramaticians or writers, and of course, all of these folks are coming after the Minoans and Mycenaeans. They're not Minoan or Mycenaean themselves. They're they're more classical Greek. However, they they are um, a part of that culture as it goes forward. So on the, the left here, you, you have uh, Euripides. Um, the the um, middle is um, uh, Aeschylus. And all the way on the right there, you have Sophocles, all three Greek writers. Uh, here near the end, uh, we've got philosophers to, to discuss briefly. And like I said, we're going to get to these folks in more detail later. Uh, but they're worth knowing. You've got uh, Socrates all the way on the left. In the center is his student Plato, um, and on the far right is uh, Plato's student Aristotle. And then to kind of close us out, uh, we mentioned Alexander briefly, and he's kind of the end of the the Greek story. Uh, and of course, that's going to have its own section as we move forward. But uh, you can see him, uh, Alexander, that is right here uh, on his horse Bucephalus preparing and chasing after and attempting to kill uh, the Persian king Darius or Darius the third okay so that brings us to an end for uh, this portion of, of what I wanted to discuss today with the the Minoa and the Mycenae and just kind of a brief overview of what we will be discussing uh, down the road when we talk about classical Greek history um, so if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out, let me know, uh, or shoot me a comment here on YouTube, and I'll try to clear that up for you. Have a good day.